So I'm going to let you in on a few little secrets. Number one, you will go faster, farther, surrounded by a group than you ever will by yourself. Welcome to Mindset Mondays, where we empower contractors like you with the tools, systems, and frameworks, not just to succeed in business, but in life as well. Join us as we explore the strategies that will elevate your work, insights that will clear your path, and stories that will inspire your journey. Because here, it's about more than just the build. It's about crafting a legacy. Welcome back to another episode of Mindset Mondays. I'm your host, Gary Bake, and I truly appreciate you guys giving me this opportunity, this opportunity to share with you some of the things that you're going to need to start thinking about, start shifting in your behavior, but ultimately will lead you to where it is that you want to go. Today's topic is going to be a fun one. I'm going to start with a story, right? If you don't know, not only did I used to be a police officer, but I used to run marathons pretty regularly. And I did run one last year. I'll probably run one again this year, but I've run, I think, 13 marathons uh, to date. A marathon is 26.2 miles, and yes, it is grueling. Now, I wouldn't call myself a speed demon because I'm not, uh, but I've been able to accomplish some different things. Now, When I was training for my first marathon, I had no idea what I was doing. None. All I had was an idea. I had a thought. I had an outcome that I wanted to achieve. I was challenged to run a marathon, and so I said, I can do this. Let's go. Up until that point, I had run one half marathon with no training, but really hadn't run anything more than a 5K. I didn't grow up being a distance runner. In fact, I was a football player and in track, I did the long jump, the triple jump and the hurdles. So nothing of any significance, but what I did was, or excuse me, what I did have was a desire to succeed, right? And that desire to succeed was inside of me. So I set about training. Now you're probably wondering, well, how did you train? I Googled how to train for a marathon found something that I thought sounded good, and I started training. Now, this particular training program had pace and distance. So I would run, I think it was five, four or five times a week for different distances and at different paces. And I would do that. Now, at the time, I lived in a town in Arizona called Queen Creek. It's pretty flat. There are some hills, but not that many hills. And so I would run these flat roads and flat trails as part of my training. I had a goal of running a four hour marathon. Now I'd never run a marathon up until that point. So four hours sounded really, really good. So everything that I did training wise was to lead up to that moment. Race day arrived and I was nervous, but excited, excited because this was going to be my first marathon, nervous because This was going to be my first marathon. Now, the race that I had chosen was in my father's hometown. He wasn't born there, but he was raised there, a small town in northern Arizona called Prescott. Now, Prescott sits at about a mile high of elevation. Queen Creek sits not so high. (laughs) Not only that, the elevation surrounding Prescott is very hilly. I didn't take this into account, as you can tell where this story is going. So show up at the race. I'm excited, nerves, but I'm ready to go. Got my water bottle and and off we go. And we start running and there's up and down on the hills and I'm managing to keep pace, but I'm realizing that I'm struggling a little harder than I thought I would be struggling. We get to about mile 10 and all of a sudden we veer off the road and onto a trail. Now, this trail wasn't a trail that went into the woods. This was a trail that went up a mountain. Kid you not, up a mountain. And so I began to trudge up this mountain. Now, being the stubborn guy that I am and having the the, um, hard-heartedness that I do, I said, we're going to do this. Come hell or high water, we're going to do this. And so I did. I ran and continued to trudge along until we made it up to the top of the hill and then down or top of the mountain, and then down a little ways to the halfway point. And they had an aid station there. Now, at this point, my legs were shot. I was shot. I was breathing harder than I'd ever breathed in my life. I literally thought I was going to die. 
So what do you do? Well, I recovered. So I stopped for a second, got a lot of water. They had bananas. They had oranges. I stuffed my face. I was like, okay, all this stuff is going to help me recover. And so I'll be able to do this. And then I turned around and began to run backwards. Well, the run to the top of the mountain wasn't too far, so it wasn't too bad. And the run down wasn't too bad either because it was downhill. Except that I didn't know that running downhill is sometimes more difficult than running uphill because of the amount of stress and pressure that it puts on your legs. I discovered that I have IT bands <laughs> and they hurt. So we are now about 16 miles in. I have another eight to go, seven, eight to go. And I'm literally dead. Uh, I threw up because I ate too much. My legs are, are toast. Uh, my lungs are toast and I've got to keep going. And so the last part of this run or this race, this marathon was more of a walk run than it was a race. And I crossed the finish line and almost collapsed. We went back to the Airbnb we were staying at. I filled the, the tub with ice and tried to lay in it, but I couldn't because it hurt too much. But <laughs> I mean, you get the point. Now, you would think that I learned from that experience so that I would do better next time. Well, at that point in life, I was not really good at planning things out. And so I had planned another marathon. So now marathon number two, three weeks later. I was like, three weeks is enough time to recover. Ha ha ha. No, it's not. So I rested, iced, massaged, you know, did some runs, uh, but still didn't feel 100% recovered. And race number two was in Idaho. We were visiting my sister and it was called the Teton Dam Marathon. And it's through the farm country and it is rolling hills, up, down, up, down, rolling hills. And again, got about halfway through and literally thought I was going to die. The second half of that race, I walked most of it. My thighs had ballooned to twice their size. I could hardly walk. I'd lost two toenails. I mean, it was brutal. I had planned a family vacation. We were literally spending two weeks on the road, traveling around to different places. And for the entire two weeks, I, I was like a hobbled old man. It, it was, it was that bad. Why am I telling you about running a marathon? You're a contractor. I'm telling you this because I want you to understand something. No matter how hard you push, how hard you try your willpower your I'm not going to give up attitude is you're going to get to a point where you cannot push any harder. In other words, the way that you've been doing things isn't working the way that it should. And so you can continue to do this me against the world mentality. I'm going to tough it out. I'll make it work. And you will. But what are you sacrificing along the way? And I start with you. Because the person that's affected most by your stubbornness, most by your lack of, of desire to learn a better way, most by the hours and hours and hours, not to just go into the work themselves, but go into the preparation and then the recovery from the work, Right? There's so many people that are affected by you and your current way of doing things. After that second race, I decided things needed to change. It took me, I think, four months, four months to fully recover. Now, if, you ever ne if you've never dealt with IT band issues, IT band is a tendon that runs from your hip to the outside of your knee. And if not treated right, it tightens up like a rubber band and you feel pain all the way from your hip down to your knee. Crippling pain. Four months to recover. Now, did I just lay in my bed and recover? No. I had to learn the right way of doing things. And it sucked. My running form sucked. The shoes I was using sucked. My nutrition sucked. My recovery sucked. Can you see the pattern here, right? I had the willpower, but I didn't have the right technique. I didn't have the right program. I didn't have a right plan. And so I was just winging it and winging it was destroying me. Now it took probably two and a half to three years 
before I finally locked everything in. Now, you may be a little better than I am. You may, may be more athletic. You may be smarter. Good. May not take you as long. But there's a point that I want to make. And the point is that it's going to take time. It's going to take time for you to get to where you want to get to. But it will take more time, cost you more energy, more stress, more anxiety, more sleep, more time away from your family if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what you're doing and how you're going to do it. And that was me. I'm no David Goggins. If you know who David Goggins is, uh, Navy SEAL, uh, really, really good story. Uh, he's got a book called Can't Hurt Me. Highly recommend reading that book. It will shift the way that you think about things and what you believe is possible. David Goggins was an active Navy SEAL, was working hard, was working out hard, was pretty consistent about that, uh, but decided that he wanted to take on not marathon running, but ultra marathon running. And there was a particular race that he wanted to qualify for. It's called Badwater. And so he decided that he was going to participate in the event. Well, wrote the race director, tried to get in. The race director said, you haven't even run a 100-mile race. Why would we let you into our race? Go run some races and then come back and talk to me. David decides that he's going to run a 100-mile race. That's not the issue. The issue was David did it with no training. Zero. So he ran a 100-mile race in San Diego qualified. In other words, he made it in the allotted time, but nearly killed himself in the process. Like he was urinating and defecating and it was bloody. Like he couldn't stand up anymore. Like he had to be admitted. Like it was bad, right? Now his willpower got him through that. But what he learned over the years, and you'll read in his book, is he talks about he had to spend as much, if not more time recovering than he did training. Because if he didn't, his body wouldn't be able to handle the rigors that he was putting it through. I'm bringing this all up because I want you to take a look at your business right now. And I want you to take a look at it, not from your perspective as the business owner, because from your perspective as the business owner, you're going to lie to yourself. You're going to tell yourself that everything is working the way that you want it to. You're going to tell yourself that everything's hunky-dory, that you have the best employees, that you have more than enough leads, that you're making plenty of money. And we could go on and on and on. But the truth is your business is not working the way that it could or should. And it's not because you don't have the desire for it to happen that way. It's that there are other things that are missing. But what are those things that are missing? You've probably heard the statement, you can't see the forest through the trees. Sometimes you're too close to the problem itself. Just like when I was running marathons, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I didn't know that I had the wrong shoes. I didn't know that my running style and form was actually adding more pressure to my IT bands. I didn't know that the food that they put out for you isn't an all you can eat. I didn't know or understand the importance of recovering, right? I didn't know these things because I was in it. And when I'm in it, I'm in it. And I'm going to do everything I can to accomplish whatever it is that I need to accomplish, even if I have to sacrifice myself in the process. And that's what's happening right now with your business. So imagine for a moment that you had the ability to step out, step back, and look at it from a drone's perspective. What's actually happening right now in my business? Where is it actually going? Is it actually taking me where I want to go? Is it giving me what I want it to give me? Am I actually taking the right steps to get the right results? And these questions are so important, but we don't spend any time looking at them. We don't spend any time working in on, on them. We don't spend any time figuring things out. We just wake up and we go to work. And then we come home and we go to sleep. And then we wake up and then we go to work and repeat and repeat and repeat. And yet we're disappointed with the lack of results that we have. 
And yet we're still pissed off because we're working more hours than we want to. And yet we still can't figure out what marketing is. And so we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Insanity, insanity. That's what your business has become. So if this is what your business has become, but it's not what you want your business to be, what do you need to do? What needs to change? What do you need to adapt? What do you need to shift? What do you need to learn? Who do you need to leverage? I get it. That was a bunch of different questions, but they're all important questions that you need to answer. So I'm going to let you in on a few little secrets. Number one, you will go faster, farther, surrounded by a group than you ever will by yourself. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I know the power of it. It happens. One of the things that I did when I was training to properly run marathons was find a running group. As silly as that sounds, other people running. Why? Well, one, they would make sure that I got up to run. But two, and this was the most important, they would challenge me when I needed to be challenged. And they would encourage me when I needed to be encouraged. And I accomplished so much more. We were doing intervals, mile intervals at the track on one of our days of training. Every week we would go to the track. We were doing sub six minute miles, intervals. And I say that because I never would have pictured myself doing sub six minute intervals, let alone one sub six minute, six minute mile. But it was being in this association, in this group that allowed me to do that. The second thing, invest in yourself as much, if not more than you invest in your business, because your business is simply a reflection of you. You want to think that, oh, if I just put money behind Facebook ads, I'll make more money. Okay, maybe, but probably not. If I buy these leads off Angie's leads or Thumbtack or anywhere else, like that'll happen. No, nope, no, nope, not going to happen. If I just hire this person, all my problems will go away. No, nope, mm -mm. because it's not the thing. It's you. If you don't know how to properly hire and train somebody, you're always going to have people problems. If you don't know how to lead people, you're always going to have management problems. If you don't know what marketing really is, who you want to address and work with, what you want to charge, you're always going to have marketing problems. If you don't know how to sell, more sales or more opportunities to sell aren't going to solve your problems. Now, let's fast forward. I want to fast forward to four years after I finally figured out that I needed help. Four years later, I had a very specific training program and plan because I wanted to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Now, the Boston Marathon is kind of unique in that you can't just pay to be a participant in that race. You have to qualify, and you qualify based on age and time. And so at the time, I was in my early 40s, and my qualifying time was three hours and 15 minutes. Up until that point, I hadn't run faster than three hours and 21 minutes. That's a six-minute improvement. I had hired a coach, I had my nutrition locked down, and my training was on point. In fact, we drove to the race course and ran the race course four times, not all of it, but pieces of it, but four times prior to the race itself because I wanted to get used to the elevation, I wanted to get used to the distance, I wanted to get used to the scenery, the curves of the road, everything. Race day arrives, still nervous, but still excited. Race starts. Now I've got to watch and I'm keeping pace and I'm making sure that I'm exactly where I need to be. I'll talk about more, more uh, specifics about the race at another time, but I will let you know that I finished the race in three hours and 12 minutes and 27 seconds. That's almost a nine minute improvement. Nine minutes in a race of 27 or 26 miles. Think about that, right? 20 seconds per mile over that entire distance. Massive. 
Why was I able to do that? Well, I just told you. I still had the willpower and the drive, and I was going to do no matter what, which, which I did need to do. Sprained my ankle in the race, um, hit the wall at mile 25, almost crawled across the finish line, right? But all these things, I was still able to leverage the right pieces, the nutrition. I didn't run out of energy, the, the coaching. So I made sure that my stride was right and I was running the race that I needed to run. Having the experience on the course, all of these things led to the success that I was after. So think about your contracting business. Think about what it is that you're investing in yourself to get the results that you want. You can pay a marketing company and they'll help you market, sure. You can hire an outside sales consultant and they'll sell for you, sure. But if you aren't working on you, it doesn't matter. The business will fall apart. It will only grow to your own capacity. So my invitation and challenge to you is to increase your capacity. Find people, find groups, find things that will challenge you, but will give you the results that you're after. In our trade group program, for example, it's not pretty. Do we laugh? Do we joke? Yeah, sure. But then I challenge people, not to what I expect them to do, but what they said that they want. And it gets a little uncomfortable because if you said that you were going to do something, I fully expect you to do it because that's your commitment to you. But what I've learned is that's where the results come from. Put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, in a container that forces you to do more and to be more. And out of that comes a better version of you. Out of that comes a better business. All right, that's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you guys being here on Mindset Monday. But you know what time it is. It's time for you to get after it. Three, two, one, off you go. And that's a wrap on today's episode of Mindset Mondays. Thank you for joining us and being a part of this incredible journey to not just be great at what you do, but to live a great life too. Remember every tool, tip, and story shared here is a step towards building your dream both on and off the job site.